call out who's on it. Um, I will go through with who's on the screen, do a little roll call if you could introduce yourself, the organization you're with. And uh, just for fun, something good that happened to you this last week. Um, so I'm Carrie Cedarquist, I'm the Community Impact Director for United Way of North Idaho. And a good thing this last week is um, I drove up into the mountains and found some rain, which was pretty nice. <laughs> so Carol Johnston, would you like to go next? Hi, I'm Carol Johnston. I'm the Executive Director for the Northwest Hospital Alliance. And I had a birthday two days ago. And it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy birthday. Um, next, I have Cassie Anderson. Hey, um, I'm Cassie. I am a social worker at Kootenai Health, and I'm the lead for North Idaho Connections over here. And something fun that I did was I went skydiving for the first time. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and you're here to tell the tale, which is always good news. <laughs> All right, next I have Chris H on my screen. Hello, uh, Chris Hartley with uh, the VA Healthcare for Homeless Veterans Program. And I believe uh, Aaron's on the call as well. And my supervisor, uh, Mariah Rhodes, she'll be on the call in about five minutes. She apologizes for being a little late. Uh, so something good this week, uh, we actually, my wife and I, uh, family, uh, purchased a 28-foot Chris Craft cabin cruiser uh, last night in Bayview, so uh, pretty excited about that. Wow, yeah. <laughs> congratulations on the addition to your family. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Next, I have Nancy Mabel. Oh, you're muted. Nancy Mabiel, I am the uh, regional planner for Panhandle Area Council, or the uh, economic development district that serves the five northern counties in Idaho. And I'm going to be honest, I was so busy this week working 10, 11 hour days that I don't know what good happened, except that I'm alive. And but I will say happy awesome. birthday to you because my birthday's on Sunday. Awesome. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Next, I have Donna Brundage. Hi, I'm Donna Brundage of St. Vincent de Paul. Um, we got a grant last week that I've been working on for over a year, and we now have a new van to transport people to the warming center. So that was a win. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Congratulations. Lots of hard work there. All right, next, I have Wendy. I am Wendy from Real Life Ministries Community Assistance, and last this last week we have our yearly celebration with all our volunteers, so we got to celebrate what our thousand plus volunteers accomplished this last year. How amazing. I that was great. Uh, next, I have Chris. Uh, Chris with uh, Advanced Benefits and also the Alice Task Force Chair. Uh, and I would say that something fun that happened is I actually got to play golf twice over the weekend and I had only played two times the entire summer. So that was fantastic. And um, uh, we played in a, a golf tournament, ABC uh, Association golf tournament. And as a team, we decided to play not with a score, but with smiley faces and frowny faces. And I'm excited to share that we had 15 smiley faces and only three <laughs> frowny faces. So it was a good round yes. for us. That is the type of scoring that I can understand and get done. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Next, I have Jackie. Hi, I'm Jackie Carter from Community Resource Envision Center. And uh, the good thing that happened to me is I had some home projects and I actually finished them. So I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> that's, that's a big deal. I'm, yeah. I'm the queen of unfinished projects. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Jackie. Next, I have Sarah Hensel. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Hensel. I'm with the Community Resource and Vision Center as well. And a good thing that happened to me and my husband was we have some family members that um, have come to be with us and they flew all the way from Chattanooga, Tennessee. So it's been nice having them. Oh, that's awesome. It's nice to be able to have family come visit again and go visit yeah. family. Thanks for joining us, Sarah. Next up, Kathy. 
Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Kathy Alban with North Idaho College. I'm the director of the Adult Education Center here. Uh, something positive is we struggled to find our huckleberries this year, but we finished out picking uh, a gallon this last weekend. So we have enough to make our annual jam stock for the year. Very nice. That is uh, location information that's held close, right? Absolutely. I could tell <laughs> you, but then I'd have to kill you. That's the story, right? Yes. Or the bear as well. Uh, next, I have Sarah. H. Yeah, um, with Idaho Housing and Finance, um, working on the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Um, something good that happened other than the rain, uh, which was epic and awesome. Um, my nephew had a little baby, which I get to hold and pet and then give back, which is awesome. <laughs> Best. Hold, pet, and give back. Yes. I think that's the <laughs> auntie's credo. <laughs> it makes it, it makes it good. I don't make the rules. Yeah. Uh, next I have Erica. Hi there, I'm Eric Rodriguez. I'm a community engagement manager at Aunt Bertha. Aunt Bertha um, is what powers North Idaho Connections. Um, the good thing or positive thing is I finished a book this weekend and started a new one. So I'm sad, but equally as excited for a new book. Well, thanks for joining us, Erica. Also the queen of unfinished books over here. <laughs> All right, next I have Aaron McCormick. Uh, yeah, I'm Aaron McCormick and I'm from the VA Habash uh, program in Spokane. And uh, I'm a case manager helping homeless vets find housing. And probably one good thing to happen to this week, guys, I actually got started on a Mother's Day present for my wife that is way overdue, but I'm halfway done with it, so. <laughs> Us, it's like a Mother's Day for last, or you're like really getting yeah, ahead for 2022. Uh, it's it's for last, and, but it's but I'm more it's we're working up to her birthday, so it's going to be kind of that you know Mother's Day into her birthday gift. <laughs> Amazing, love it. Thanks, Karen. Um, and then I think I already heard from Cassie, but your screen moved around. So next, I have Brenna. Good morning, Brenna from North Idaho College Center for New Directions. A positive thing that happened um, over the weekend from my family. Our youngest turned 10. And we had a really fun birthday celebration and she doubled digits and she had a great celebration. Awesome. Remember how cool it was thinking when I turned 10, like, yeah, I'm the double digits now. So I guess the rest of your life. Um, I think last uh, that we haven't heard from is just uh, Mark over here. I'm Mark Tucker, Executive Director for United Way of North Idaho. And our Ride for Alice is this weekend. And so this week has been really fun in gathering raffle prizes from uh, local businesses that are donating, um, as well as getting volunteers that are uh, logging in and signing up to help. So it's always good to see all of that stuff come together for a community uh, benefiting event as well as uh, one of our events and I was so excited for it I rode my motorcycle to work today so that's another good thing that happened this week. Just gotta yeah stretch its legs right I'm sure it's good and ready. <laughs> All right next I have David and so David Kimberly and Mariah that just came on we're introducing ourselves and sharing a positive thing that happened um, over the last week so David would you like to go next? Uh Yes, yes, sorry. Um, David Gortner uh, from St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, and uh, last week, let's see. Uh, well, this week, actually, my, uh, my younger uh, kid has been immersed in a um, theater, children's theater experience where they're rehearsing Little Shop of Horrors, which will be uh, staged in two weeks. So it's a tight, tight uh, schedule to get it all done before school starts, but, but Jordan's very excited, so. Oh, that's awesome, and a probably great uh, evening play to look forward to, yeah. evening of theater. Yeah. Thanks, David, and then Kimberly. Well, if it's for personal things, I have my first grandchild in the last couple of weeks, so that's been awesome. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, so, yeah. And professionally, I had a I have a client graduating with uh, I think about 
$12,000 in escrow that they've earned doing our program. So that's pretty awesome too. Oh, congratulations. Um, and then next I have uh, Mariah. Yeah, hi, um, I'm Mariah Rhodes and I am one of the uh, clinical supervisors for the uh, HUD BASH program with Healthcare for Homeless Vets. Um, with the VA. And um, oh boy, a good thing that happened this week. Well, uh, our program director and our service chief have been out for two and a half weeks and our business has not burnt down and I have not managed to destroy anything. And so that is a huge win uh, for me. And hopefully when she gets back from Alaska, um, everything will still be the way it's supposed to be. So that's my win for this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Maria. It's probably been a lot of extra work on you. All right, well, I think that is everybody that I've seen on my screen. Did I miss anyone? No, but Carrie, can we all just give you and Mark and United Way of North Idaho accolades for your amazing um, grant that you received in the article in the Coeur d'Alene Press and how, what an amazing group of people you are and what that's gonna do for our community. Congratulations. Thank you, Kathy. We're excited to work with that grant opportunity to really reach out to a lot more of our, our region, our community and, and support kids. So thank you. Um, I will say that health and welfare made it very easy on us to apply. So don't don't over or under overestimate. Anyways, you know what I'm trying to say. All right, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Chris Klein for our regularly scheduled program. Yeah. Thanks, Carrie. And thanks for everyone for sharing a little bit uh, today. Uh, so uh, our featured presentation this morning is on North Idaho Connections. Most, most of you are familiar with North Idaho Connections, but, but we thought it would be good for us to spend a little time on a refresher on North Idaho Connections, as well as give the task force here an opportunity to ask the, the North Idaho Connections team questions that maybe you have. So I'll turn it over to Carol and your team and um, take it away. Okay, great. Well, thank you for having us this morning because this is a really important project in our community. And uh, I just want to give all of you accolades, quite frankly, for serving on the Alice Task Force because to see this group come together, to work together, um, and collaborate together and look for those gaps and help to wrap around people is just really, really important. Um, that is why our hospitals, so the Northwest Hospital Alliance that I work for represents Kootenai Health and seven critical access hospitals. So that's Bonner General up in Sandpoint, Boundary Community in um, Bonner's Ferry, Shoshone Medical Center out in the Silver Valley, Benawa Community Hospital down in St. Mary's, Clearwater Valley Hospital, in Orofino, um, let's see, St. Mary's down in Cottonwood and Syringa Hospital down in Grangeville. And so I know that for at least the 15 years that I've lived in this community, we have tried so many times to create a roster of resources in the community and it's always changing. The minute you think you've got it, it's out of date. The minute you think you've got it, the program changed or transition happened in the organization. And it was just, and it was really difficult to capture um, all of the resources that we had in the community. So switch gears from that social service side to the hospital side. So from the hospital's perspective and the part of Cassie's role in the transitions of care department, um, at Kootenai Health is when we're looking at discharging a patient or finding resources for a patient who's in the clinic because they have challenges in some way with the social determinants of health um, and that creates an issue with them being successful in their care and, and being successful in their journey through their health. And a lot of times they readmit back to the hospital and that becomes a financial problem, a financial burden and a healthcare burden. So um, we really looked at how can we wrap around people and try to fill those gaps to try and link with all of the resources, the nonprofits and even those free and reduced 
link organizations um, in the community and others that just can help us help um, people get the resources that they need. So um, we landed on, we put out an RFP and we landed on Aunt Bertha after having vetted a few other programs. And people said, Aunt Bertha, that's the craziest name for her, <laughs> an online platform we've ever heard. But um, we got some initial funding from Pacific Source Insurance to help us launch the program. Um, we got some additional funding from Blue Cross to help us sustain that. And um, I think we're almost into our third year of really developing a robust database. Um, Erica is going to talk about it. She's going to give you a little bit of a tour on it. Um, talk about the importance of all the organizations claiming the site. The really awesome piece of this is that there is, yes, a public face so that everyday Jane and Joe can say, I'm looking for a resource and they can find it. But also all of you and all of our nonprofits and the hospitals who are trying to wrap around people. And I hate to use the word case manage, but technically we are trying to make sure they get connected um, to the right ser services and we don't just hand them a phone number but we actually make that referral with them um, that we will have success with this program. So I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna turn this over to Erica. She's going to um, share her screen, give you all a little tour, um, kind of where we are with this today in the state and uh, I'll shut up and let you go, Erica. <laughs> No, thanks, Carol. Um, hi again, everybody. So I will make this uh, as brief as possible, but try and pack you all with information. So this is North Idaho Connections. It's northidahoconnections.org. And as Carol mentioned, anybody can access this resource. Um, it is driven by a zip code. So although it is um, focused in North Idaho Connections, it actually does serve nationwide and the entire state. Again, it's powered by Aunt Bertha and Aunt Bertha is a nationwide um, organization. So if you do happen to be helping someone who isn't in North Idaho, you could certainly still use this as a resource. Um, again, we list social services on this site, ranging from different categories we find that most folks use this category or navigation bar because more often than not, they just know about the need that they have. They have no idea who in the community is providing that service. However, um, if you're helping um, someone and you already know about an organization, you can certainly do a keyword search. It also can be translated into over 100 different languages. Another really small piece, but a really valuable piece for the community is that you don't need a login in order to use the site itself. There are some bells and whistles that come with creating a free account, but that's really important to us, making sure that we're promoting self-navigation in the community so that folks can find and connect to resources. I was doing some digging earlier, and I know that you guys have a partnership with um, or are looking in partnerships with financial education. And so I thought that that'd be a good example to use. So for example, if I'm looking for money, maybe financial assistance, help paying for utilities, or maybe just financial education, I can do a search that way. I can find programs that provide this as a resource in this zip code. Um, there's about 58 search results. I don't know about you guys, but that's probably a lot to be moving through pages. So we do have filters. You can narrow down those search results by those filters, um, as well as program filters. This can be really important if you are helping someone who has to get connected to a program after work or before work or only on the weekends. This is a helpful tool there, as well as additional languages. I like to call this one out because it is different from translating the site in our filters here. It actually means that there are programs providing their services in these additional languages. And then we have income eligibility, which is based off the federal poverty income level. 
And you can see the program information. I believe you guys have a partnership with Bank on North Idaho. So one big thing to highlight here is people can find this as a resource. Um, this group has also gone through the next step of claiming their program on the platform. Claiming is entirely free, but what it allows is organizations that are listed on here can have full ownership of the program information. So if anything is changing, they have access to update it in real time. You can also see more information about who might be eligible, what the availability is. And Carol kind of alluded to this, um, is that more often than not, resource guides are going out of date fairly quickly. We understand that as a resource directory. So there's actually a couple ways that information remains up to date. The first one is organizations themselves through that claiming process. They can update and edit all of this information in real time. The other piece of it is our community. So anybody can suggest changes. This will go through our data team that's in, based out of Austin, Texas. And so they'll verify that that change is correct. And if those two things aren't happening, every six months, our data team will go in and review the program information. And we wanna be transparent about that. So under the more info, you're always able to see when the last updated date is. So not only can you find information here, programs also have the ability, um, again, to manage program information. I am more than happy to connect with you all on what that might look like for your own organization. But at least for today, I'll just expand on what happens when you find this program and you think it's a good fit for the person you might be working with. You can share this as a resource. You can share it via email, text message, or even through Facebook. There is also a printing option. Another key piece too is if you prefer to navigate in English, but the person you're helping prefers a different language, you can also send program information in that different language. And then the last piece on connections is you can actually send an online referral through this platform. So you're not only finding programs, but you can send online referrals. This program has it set up so that they can receive online referrals and they can be self referrals or if you're referring on behalf of someone else. I'm sure you guys are getting nervous now that I'm saying referrals. These are social care referrals. These are not medical referrals. Um, and we are HIPAA compliant. So there must be consent anytime that a referral is sent to an organization. I'll pause there. Are there any thoughts or questions so far that I can help to answer? I have a question. If if you sign up, are you required to, to be part of the referral program? Yeah, great question. So anybody can create an account. I don't know why I was scrolling down. It's here at the top. Um, anybody can create an account. You can create an account even if you don't have a program on the platform. Um, and if you do have a program on the platform, claiming simply gives you being on the platform is just a way for people to find your program. There is um, really nothing else to that. Claiming your program though, which we encourage for any organization listed on here, truly gives you access to all the information. Um, and so I can go ahead and show you what that looks like really quickly, but it doesn't mean that you have to, have to receive online referrals. In fact, if you are not at a place where you can receive online referrals, maybe just for staff bandwidth, or the best way to contact is to just show up or to call, I still encourage claiming because you can see here, there's some programs here that online referrals aren't the best way to connect. The best way is actually to connect on a website or to call a number. So just because you're listed doesn't necessarily, just because you're listed or just because you claim doesn't necessarily mean that you have to receive online referrals. It's simply an option. And once you claim, you have access to a free suite of tools that help you manage that and say, hey, right now we can't receive online referrals or here's the link to the application that we need folks to go to. Or we do wanna receive online referrals what are the different options? Because we have different options there as well. 
That's a good question. Thank you. Any other thoughts or questions here? The last thing that I will share and then I will pass the mic back over to Carol is there is that free suite of tools. Um, it sounds like a lot of you all are, are helping with the navigation piece. So I wanted to make sure to highlight that. And again, anybody anywhere can be using this site. You all can be using it as an organization. Your clients can use this as well and self-navigate. Um, however, if you are listed on here, there is a whole other free suite of tools, ways to manage program information, like I mentioned, um, track those referrals that you might be receiving, as well as reporting. Reporting not only on the amount of referrals you're receiving, how many people you've been able to help or not help through the platform, as well as some community data. So who is using North Idaho Connections? Who, what are they searching for in my area? What are those search terms folks are looking for? Um, and information like that about your community as well in the program analytics. And I don't know if I shared this before and I apologize. This is all entirely free. It's not a free today and there's a cost later on. It's entirely free to the community as well as to your organizations who are using the site. Um, there's no limit to the amount of programs you can have. We essentially just wanna make sure that people are getting connected to your programs. And a really great way to do that as well is by taking that step to claim. It really just gives you ownership over all that program information. We do have a data team though. So if you do see, hey, this looks out of date and I wanna claim, but some of these things need to be updated. We have a data team that's happy to help and you'll see some chat boxes pop up um, once you're inside the tools as well. Alrighty, I will stop there. Um, and Carol, I will pass it back to you. Well, can you talk to, um, I guess there's two things I'd like to show the group. Um, one is that, you know, COVID is spiking again in our community. My office is based at Kootenai Health. Um, Cassie will tell you that this hospital is absolutely overwhelmed right now. And so are the smaller hospitals. Um, but we have a lot of COVID resource links. Um, can you take them to that so they can see um, how somebody in the community or somebody from their agency um, is looking for that, that they can find that. Oh. I wasn't sharing my screen anymore. <laughs> Let me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. That was on me. I'm so sorry. Um, so the way I did it, there's actually a couple ways. The quick and easy way that I'd recommend is jumping into this um, keyword search here at the left, and you can simply type COVID-19 or the start of it and then it'll autofill for you and you'll be able to see all the resource that are tagged COVID response programs. As you're going through though, um, I think there was some even on our financial education, you'll see these little featured flags that highlight programs that have been created or have changed up something in their um, program that helped to um, support the COVID-19 response. So here are programs. And again, a quick and easy way that I'd recommend is, is just typing that in the keyword search and you're able to see all of those programs there. And then the other thing that I think is um, really important, and Erica, you started talking about the analytics. Mm -hmm. um, from my perspective, you know, one of the things that I see is it, it's great to know what resources we have, but as I think that this might be a really good tool for the Alice task force as well, because if, if we're seeing requests for um, services that just don't exist in our community or that people have to go out of our community to uh, get connected to those, um, it, it might be interesting down the road to be able to look at those gaps and say, gosh, maybe we need to create a program in our community. Maybe one of our local agencies can add that on to um, what they currently do is serve. Um, or maybe, you know, it, I'm just looking for ways to fill the gaps for people who look 
who need resources in our community, but they don't exist. Well, I'm so excited to see that and so glad for this update to learn that, that those analytics are available because that's something that we've been really curious about with this launch is, you know, how do we see the back end data and what people are looking for, what they're using just for that exact reason. So um, perfect timing on this. I'm excited to dig into it. And I, I know we're probably getting short on time, but Cassie, can I pass this over to you too and just talk about the importance of this for a minute? Uh, from the hospital's perspective and discharging patients and finding those resources and how you do that? Yeah, so from the hospital side of things, a lot of times um, we are passing out multiple resources for inpatient. Um, you know, a lot of times it's financial assistance trying to get bill pay because they've been in the hospital for 37 days. Um, you know, and then as far as Maybe they're homeless and they're needing resources for shelters or um, food banks or things of that nature. I'm passing out resources at least to probably 10 patients a day, um, depending what floor I'm on. And uh, throughout our hospital, all of the social workers, nurses, and so forth are um, utilizing North Idaho connections to better serve our community and help with the social determinants of health. Uh, we're really, really trying to focus on the readmission factor and if we can bridge that gap um, and provide those resources to encourage people to you know um, if it's shelter how can we get them there if it's um, utility assistance and that's why they came to the hospital because it's 30 degrees out and they have no heat or you know how we can bridge that gap for them questions from the group um, are you using it? We want you to use it. <laughs> any feedback for any... the, the team? Pardon me, well, Chris. I, uh, I just mentioned too how, how great it is to have this backend data, but then I was also curious how like the outreach to organizations has been and if you had um, good outcomes with encouraging organizations to claim their their page and keep their information updated if that's something that you have a pulse on because as you mentioned in the in the beginning um you know this type of platform is only as good as the information that goes into it um and so kind of looping that thought around if there's a way that this group can help promote or encourage or coach um folks that you know that's an opportunity that we can on has has it been well received as you've seen erica do you want yeah. to respond yeah i'm happy to share here um it has been the feedback has been really has gone really well with our community-based organizations um, you are absolutely right. Uh, this site is only as good as, you know, those contributing to it and being a part of the network. It's certainly something that I can, I'm happy to share what that data looks like across the state of Idaho. Um, and I can certainly pull out specifically North Idaho data. That is information we have on our end, and I'm, I'm happy to provide that. The biggest pieces of feedback that we get, though, from organizations and, and the reason why we we take a specific approach when reaching out to organizations about this. And, and the first one is that most organizations, I imagine all of you all oftentimes have someone that you're helping and then they have additional needs that you cannot help to provide. Not that you don't want to, but you guys don't have those services. And our, you know, I bet everybody or like 90% of you guys have a post-it note or a document somewhere of like your go-to resources, um, but it's only as good as, as you keep it up, but you know that those are trusted resources and we know that that happens with organizations. And so the biggest piece is being able to help fill in the gaps um, when connecting to resources and organizations have found that incredibly helpful because they see that being helpful, they wanna be a part of it. I wanna make sure my information is up to date not only so that people can find accurate information, but we aren't getting overwhelmed with people who aren't qualified. It's in our best interest to make sure that this information is up to date. And a big piece of our platform is it being flexible. Um, the question earlier, I'm sorry, I couldn't see whose name popped up, but 
you don't have to receive referrals through this platform if you don't choose to. You have every organization has the power to say, hey, right now we can't receive online referrals. And we see that fluctuate sometimes, especially through the pandemic. We have funds. So yes, we are available. And then those funds run out. There are ways to say, hey, we are out of funding on the site or we are temporarily closed or we are operating on a wait list. So the site also provides a lot of flexibility, which shows a lot of value to our um, organizational partners. The other piece is it is living. So if there's ever anything that you don't see, we have um, ways to suggest new programs as new programs pop up. That way we can make sure that it is a helpful resource. Again, we have seen really great traction in the entire state of Idaho, not just North Idaho. Um, we have some other Aunt Bertha partners working across the state. And I have been very involved with, with those community meetings. So if there is anything uh, that I can be helpful with, any FAQs and those answers, I'm happy to provide that information. You know, you mentioned something that I think we all think about and is that post-it note or that little list of your favorite resources because each, uh, each person, each social worker, case manager, person working within the system can create their own folder of their favorites um, and that way it's there for you, but it's updated um, information as opposed to maybe you had your post-it note or your notebook that you uh, had your resources and maybe it became outdated and you didn't know it. So um, you can use the electronic side of this to create your own favorites or any of your staff who are doing this. And we also talked about the fact that it's free. Um, Kootenai Health right now is paying for the licensure um, to be able to have, be, have the Aunt Bertha platform in our community and that, that makes it free to um, all of the agencies and there's not a licensing fee of each person that uses it, it's just across the board and we're taking care of that, so. Any other questions? I know we're probably at time or, but. Uh, just one other quick question. I know when I have attended the trainings for um, North Idaho Connections in the past, they provided us with a few um, postcard type size, um, kind of informative cards that we could give to students or clients that we were working with. Are any of those materials still available at all? And if so, who would I connect with to get a few of those? That would be me. Um, and I have lots of them. And then we're actually working on getting some business card sized um, information that has a QR code, especially students, that would be great because everyone has their smartphone, right? So um, we can work on getting those to you. Cassie, I'll just send you a quick email with my information. If, if we can connect there, I would love some. Wonderful. I, I, I would like to be added to that list as well. We would as well at, at IHA. Yeah, so with Donna and St. Vincent's, CDA. <laughs> so maybe we can go through Carrie and, and the task force and you can help us get it to all the task force members. Sure thing. Okay. Um, I have another question and I don't know if um, you kind of covered it a little bit and talking about statewide, but um, is there any uh, connection with 211 at this point? Yeah, that's a great question. To my knowledge, we don't have a formal partnership with 211. However, from an Aunt Bertha perspective, it's definitely something that we'd like to do. We work with 211s um, on a local basis or across the country in different states. Uh, but at the moment, I don't believe we have a formal partnership with 211. It's definitely something that we're happy to explore. We see each other, at least from an Aunt Bertha perspective, um, on the same mission, but offering different services. One of the biggest ones is you can't call North Idaho Connections or any of our Aunt Bertha platforms where you have um, someone you can call at 211. If you, uh, I'm happy to work alongside you if you have a contact there so that we can get into discussion about what partnerships look like. But at the moment, there's not a formal partnership with the Idaho 211. 
It's not formal, but and you may not be aware of this, Erica, but we have had meetings with the state and with 211. And so when we're working with Department of Health and Welfare, who in a lot of states, it's the United Way that manages the 211 system. In Idaho, it's the Department of Health and Welfare. And so we have had communication with them. And from the state's perspective, um, you know, they're trying to connect 211 and um, Aunt Bertha together as, as a resource for more robust resources because I don't know about you all, but I've heard 211 works pretty well in the Boise area, but it just hasn't functioned well here in North Idaho for years. And so, again, another reason that we have the Aunt Bertha platform. So, And I was going to mention, we, we have been doing a number of trainings. If for any reason you need training for your staff, um, please let either Cassie or myself know, um, and we can set up a training with Erica or one of her team members to be able to provide that for your organization. Awesome. Well, Carol and Erica and Cassie, thank you so much for sharing the information today. It's definitely helpful. It's definitely a great resource, and it's, it's exciting to see the progress and the momentum that, that, is, that is occurring with North Idaho Connection. So thank you for all your efforts. Um, and, you know, we'll definitely all circle with Mark and Carrie on how we can best get those postcards and business cards about North Idaho Connections and distribute them to the, the, the Alice Task Force. So more to come on that. Great. Thank so, you. So uh, happy to hang out if you want. We're going to hear from other agencies, just quick updates, uh, shares, uh, sharing of, of other resources. Um, so uh, let's let's switch gears to sharing agency updates or a, a resource that your agency has that you'd like to highlight in the helps bulletin, or maybe it's a resource not within your agency, but you're aware of it and would be good to highlight in the helps bulletin. So who would like to kick things off? I'll go. Um, right now, St. Vincent's is trying to get a committee of um, organizations or citizens together to discuss the warming center and what that's gonna look like this year. Um, <clears throat> because we're probably again gonna have another COVID winter. And um, we're talking, we're actually looking for um, a better physical location, but we do have a plan if that doesn't work out, we're probably gonna use the old Post Falls thrift store on Celtis. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of things that came up yesterday. We did call a meeting after the Region One Homeless Coalition meeting, and the only organization that really showed up was Heritage, um, which is a key, a key, especially with medical screening and things that are going to need to happen. But we welcome anybody that has any input or any ideas um, to contact myself about that, and we'll get you in touch for the next meeting that we're having. But we're trying to get a community group together instead of just being Heritage Health and St. Vincent's doing this. So who would like to go next? Um, I have a couple things from the United Way perspective. Um, as Mark mentioned, our ride for Alice is this Saturday. And um, it is a motorcycle ride that goes from Coeur d'Alene over to Harrison, back to Post Falls. Um, this ride kickstarted, and that pun is very intended, um, the scholarship program for our Alice families for childcare. And so um, we encourage you to spread the word. We've, I've had a good handful of folks just in my circle that have said, I can't, I don't have a, a bike, I don't want to ride that day, but here's 20 bucks registration so that it can help um, those families. So we love promoting that. Um, our day of caring is also coming up on September 9th. So this is an opportunity for organizations to submit projects that need volunteer help um, and get a one day, um, a group of volunteers for the day to tackle a project. Um, you can submit those 
project registrations up through August 23rd. It's also an opportunity for our, our local businesses and civic groups to, um, to serve for a day and see really on the ground what it is that your organization does on a day-to-day -day basis, the mission, um, providing some context for why we do what we do in the community. So on the, on the volunteer end, that registration is also open through the 23rd. Um, it's a really great way to develop relationships with different sectors of the community. So that's also on our website. And then finally, our competitive um, community care fund grant process is open. The deadline is September 30th. Um, we have an FAQ and um, technical assistance session next week. Again, you can find it on our website. Um, I'll put the link in there though too. And um, Kathy kind of alluded to the health and welfare grant that we received. And a big chunk of that is going into our community care fund to really increase the overall pool of funding that's available specifically for education, um, youth success. And so we're, we're really encouraging organizations that are working in those areas of out of school time and behavioral health supports for youth five to 13 to apply to this fund. In addition to our standing impact areas of health um, and financial stability and school readiness. So if you have any questions about that, uh, please reach me if you wanna join the technical assistance session. It'll also be recorded, get a little help with the grant writing and things. Um, I will put the links in the chat along with my uh, email. Terry, is that Kootenai County only? No, thank you for asking that. The grant is open to the any organization working in um, human services whose who's, uh, work addresses health, education, and financial stability in the five northern counties. We can also provide grants to health districts and um, schools. I have one other quick thing. Um, the Chamber of Commerce, the Coeur d'Alene, it's the regional, the greater Coeur d'Alene Regional Chamber of Commerce, I think is the title now, has a, a group, a nonprofit group that meets, um, the next meeting is Wednesday at noon coming up this week. And um, our homework was to invite people to join this meeting. Um, it's a group of nonprofits and businesses that are getting together to see how, um, the business community can better recognize the financial impact that nonprofits make on the area and to share resources and to see how the business community can offer offer like, you know, loan and executive programs or internships or things like that. Um, and so we really would love to see this group grow a little bit. If anybody's interested, just show up. It's at noon at the chamber building next Wednesday. Other resources good for shares for the group? Other things that maybe you know? I've got one. Um, so it was mentioned a couple months ago about a need for computers for people who don't have computer access. And um, I have one of my volunteers who works for uh, 765 Tech, um, where she has, when people are getting rid of computers because they're, they're old and out of date, um, she's collecting them and putting basic software and stuff on it for people. So if they need just a basic computer for doing online applications for jobs and stuff, um, uh, they can contact her and she can get them set up with it. And I went ahead and emailed you the flyer that's got the information on it, Chris. Thank you. Will she also cover <laughs> Bonner County? Because uh, uh, the Community Resource and Vision Center is looking to get a couple um, computers like that for our center so people can come in and do online applications and that type of thing? I think as long as you're probably willing to come and pick them up from her, she yeah. she's fine <laughs> with that. Okay. So, yeah, so I've got, I sent the, the a link with the flyer uh, that you can print off that's got all of her information on it to Chris so he can send it out to the group. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. Yeah, that'd be great. Our, our care program has families in Silver Valley that are in desperate need of that kind of stuff. Wendy, that's awesome. I'd like to go ahead and give a shout out um, to a North Idaho housing forum that the Panhandle Area Council will be holding on October 14th at the Best Western Coeur d'Alene Inn. We're still in the planning stages, so 
uh, my IHA, FHA folks and Carrie, I'd like to talk to you uh, after, after this meeting about that a little bit more. Um, what I've found is, uh, first of all, in our comprehensive, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy that I help facilitate, uh, it says in there one of the action items is to hold a regional housing forum on an annual basis to start in 2022. However, housing is an issue now, it has been for quite a while, and I'm finding that each county has their own little silos and nobody's talking to each other. So I'm bringing all five counties together in the same room for one day on the 14th of October. I can give a little bit better announcement next month because like I said, we're still on the planning stages. However, the registration will probably come out um, at the end of this month on Eventbrite. So um, I'd be happy to, to share with the group because everybody and anybody is welcome to attend. And hopefully we are planning this to be in person. It's not a it's not a virtual. So hopefully things can you know maintain as far as COVID goes. Um, I'm really excited for a meeting I'm having on Monday, and um, I'm it's an in-person meeting. I'm, well, Mark will be there, I hope, and um, I'm really really saying my prayers. Thank you. Oh, I'll put my uh, name and email um, and all in the chat box. So if you want more information on the housing forum, I would be happy to help send it out to you. St. Luke's has uh, um, got a team of eager tutors uh, ready to work with, um, with adults that are seeking their GED or needing some help with driver's license reading a manual, figuring out how to make sense of that wonderful document, um, and, and also some job application assistance. So um, if you know folks that need some assistance uh, in that way, we've got, we've got a good uh, group of retired teachers and, and other folks that are ready to step up. So. And David, you thank you. I appreciate your outreach efforts there. We have been contacted, the Adult Education Center here at NIC have been contacted by your outreach group and they have been very, very receptive to helping us out. So we, we have a training that, that's coming up and they're, we're, we're on board. Thank you for that. I want to remind everybody that the SPAN walk is coming up September 11th. That's the Suicide Prevention Action Network awareness. Um, it'll be at Riverstone and you can go to the SPIN um, website to get details or I can send a post or two. Um, it's, there will be a free tabling opportunity there if you'd like. And if not, it's free to walk if you want a t-shirt, which are really cool. They're 20 bucks and, you know, come represent your agency and support suicide awareness. I, I guess the only other thing that I have um, here at the Adult Education Center is we have moved locations. I think I might have mentioned that. Uh, we're over in the Molstead Library up on, this, uh, on the second floor, which is a great location for our students. Um, but also we had the opportunity to purchase two new Zoom classrooms, and we will be doing outreach to um, Moye Springs to Clark Fork to Priest River, Silver Valley, St. Mary's, that'll allow students in those outlying areas to zoom into in-person class instruction that's taking place. So that's um, a new opportunity that I would like to share for, I think that's very pertinent to our Alice community. Mark, any, any final thoughts? Um, the only thing I can think of is just to add to what Carrie said about Day of Caring is um, that is also regional. So if there's projects in the Silver Valley and also the Community Resource and Vision Center and Sandpoint has been really helpful in getting teams and projects together up there as well. So thank you, Jackie, for that. 
Um, so anything that, that even is outside of Coeur d'Alene, Cooney County area, we would love to have the teams and projects uh, and, and help that grow. Um, the past couple of years, uh, we've had Sandpoint projects and it's been great. And I think we've had one Silver Valley project. So if we can get more up there as well, that'd be good. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you for those of you that completed the survey that I sent out with the Alice Task Force invite. Um, if you did complete that, please send me a quick email with your name because I neglected to put uh, somewhere in there an opportunity to put your name in. So I want to be able to send you your coffee card. So I need to know who you are. So just send me a quick email with your name and I'll make sure to get you a coffee card. Uh, again, that survey, we're just looking uh, for feedback on how we can improve the task force um, in the short term and the long term. So thank you for that. Um, and with that, uh, thank you all for your participation and look forward to connecting with you next month. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.